I so hate to say true. it, but that, but that Call of Duty, it was cool, but because it was cool, not because it was trying yeah. super fucking hard. Yeah, it, it knows how to be cool because it was intrinsically cool. Every other game is fucking Abercrombie wearing very sexy cologne. You know, trying like trying to be cool. What's up, everyone? Welcome to the podcast, a show dedicated to talking about all the progress things in life, like music, content, creation, and video games. I am one of your co-hosts, Jesse Kazam. And my power level is over 9,000. 9,000? Yeah, 9,000. I I went back, and I've been watching, uh, watching the old DBZ. Oh, nice. I've never yeah, seen I, a I, single episode of Dragon Ball Z. Damn, you're missing out. I know. I know. It's one of those things where, like, you miss it, and then there's so much, it's overwhelming to me. I don't know where to start, because isn't there, like, different... Is there different universes or just so, different shows that are all under the umbrella of Dragon Ball Z? I don't know how Here's the works. deal. I literally came into it, like, 500 years late. Oh, really? Well. Oh, okay. Yeah. I never watched Darius. I, I actually don't even know the answer, and I don't care. Gotcha. I'm pretty sure there's, like, Dragon Ball like yeah. beforehand. Um, and I just remember <laughs> going over, like, my my neighbor's house. It was, like, the neighbor across the street, which is, like, one I didn't hang out with a ton. Yeah. Um, He was definitely uh my, my, my buddy Chris fucking really really smart kid but was into different things than like me and my friends like he got gotcha. he had like the gamecube and played like super smash brothers and watched like dragon ball z gotcha. whereas like we were watching you know, we, we'd be playing madden and yeah okay 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 um but i totally vibed with that stuff too i just never got into it super hardcore but yeah so i remember watching a few episodes while I was like over his house, but uh, but it wasn't until I was like 25 or something that I'm like, oh, you know what? I'm gonna go back and watch. <laughs> and I watched a bunch of it when it was online. <clears throat> and then <laughs> I don't even remember what it was. It was actually, it, it was coincidental because like the, I don't know if it was the creator or whoever it was that just recently passed away. Oh, really? Um, Yeah. For yeah. some reason, there was like something that was going on around the same time that made me want to check it out again so yeah I, I got like a 14 day free trial on what is the website crunchy roll crunchy roll okay yeah yeah and uh that's funny yeah, well, and i actually got debated because there's like a an abridged like an overdubbed dragon ball z in english like yeah. on youtube which basically is like they're all cut out like they cut out a lot of the filler shit in between um oh interesting but I got like halfway through one of them and realized I was like, wait a minute. I think they like someone else overdubbed it. Mm. Cause like the, one of the first things I noticed was like a, the, this farmer, random farmer dude. who's just like an NPC, like total side character or whatever. said something about like, Oh no, my, my marijuana crops or whatever. I'm like, was that, did he really like, wait, I don't remember that. Um, and it was like, not the greatest voice acting. I'm like, I don't remember these being that bad. Oh my uh, god, that's yeah. funny. So though they were originally not in English, like there's a part I'm of me. Pretty sure it's all Japanese. Gotcha. Or whatever. There was almost a part of me as as a kid, like when I was young. Maybe not as a kid, but when I was younger, like I almost just thought that was like a Nickelodeon show or like something that I just never got into or or whatever. So I didn't know it was like proper, like dubbed anime. Yeah, I mean, I and I'm like massively ignorant because I, I, I literally, other than Cory in the house uh, and Pokemon, uh, you know, the only two animes or anything remotely yeah, close yeah, to anime. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, the only thing I ever watched was Edge Runners. I almost said Edge. Oh Masters, yeah, but that's, uh, Edge Masters. That's like a a thing in Diablo. Oh, um, is it? <laughs> yeah. So, uh, so yeah, I really don't know anything about. Uh, oh. I'm not I'm not a weeb, so I, I don't know. Yeah. Don't know the history or whatever. I just know that you can kind of start and with like episode yeah. one, it's like we're starting off after this battle that just happened and this is a bad guy, and it's like, okay, cool, like whatever. Like That's I all I need to know. You, I'm in. You don't yeah, yeah. Um and uh I mean you could probably 
if you were ever curious, you know, just check out the first like 30 episodes yeah. or whatever. And then th that'll get you right up to like over 9,000. And then, then you'd get a pretty good idea of, you know, if you're, uh, if you're interested. Cause in that's it. the thing is like, cool. I kind of wouldn't mind a show that I, that just has a billion episodes that I could just like always throw on at night when I'm chilling, you know what I mean? So maybe I'll, yeah. Maybe I'll check it out. I know my buddy Adam's been trying to get me on it for years. He's huge into Dragon Ball. Um, yep. That's a. So, did you watch Arcane yet? Because you watched Edge Runners, and I told you to watch I watched Arcane. the like first five minutes of it. Okay. And and then something came up. Gotcha. And then I haven't gone back. Um, that makes sense. I still am sure. Like it's on my list of things yeah. that I'm sure I would Ar like. Yeah. Right? And it's not. It's one of those ones. At least for me, it was like. By the end of the season, I was like, this is like top 10 TV shows I've watched in the past few years. It was really good. But it wasn't like that at the end of the first episode. You know what yeah. I mean? So like you got to kind of like be ready. Not that it's boring. It's not like super slow, but it's not like, but I almost like that. I like that about some shows and movies. Like my favorite show of all time is Breaking Bad. And like the first season of that is arguably like hard to get through. <laughs> it's so slow. You know what I mean? So, but it. Uh, but I like that because you you take time with characters and then there's a better and bigger payoff at the end. So it's like, I wouldn't say Arcane was slow, but it wasn't at, like, you were like, okay, I mean, whatever. But then by the end, you're just like, how did they do this? It was just so good. It was so good. Um, Interesting, yeah. Oh, I remember why. I remember why. It was because I had, there was, there's a, this one particular psycho crazy flat earther who was like talking about like the earth getting tucked into like the Milky Way and like the stars are like the women and the moon is the man, but the pregnant son is the woman and the man is the moon. Like, and, and he kept doing like, it's like, it's in the thing. And I, and I ended up like, you know, doing the oh, whole energy blast yeah, from the hands. Yeah, okay, okay, and, okay. and I spent like probably 40 <laughs> minutes editing, like his like hair all like, shh, and all energized or whatever. And I was like, Oh, fuck. I, I had to do the meme. So then I'm like, oh, now I need to watch the show. That's again. In that's why that makes sense that makes sense but yeah what's uh what what's up with you what's been going on not a whole lot uh not a whole lot we uh been playing tarkov we've been uh i saw the like your your level one to yeah we're 15. doing another like we did the one to 15 keter only and oh i don't know that we've talked about this maybe we did I almost feel like we did now. You tell me. So you remember how we've had lots of conversations about YouTube on thumbnail. the podcast? Yes. Yes. And the thumbnail. Okay. Yeah, we, yeah. Okay. So that video, like the Keter 1 to 15 video was like, we released it and it was like, oh, flop. Like nobody cares. 10 out of 10. As far as like, that's not a good thing when you talk about YouTube stuff. Sometimes people think 10 out of 10. That's great. But it's like, no, it's your 10th out of 10 worst performing video, ba ba ba, whatever. And uh, it was like a few weeks later, three, four weeks later, we changed the thumbnail. And it was the first time I'd ever seen like a actual Kung Pao kick in the nuts to the algorithm as a result of a thumbnail change. And so now that video really kind of like found its home and it's sitting at like 370,000 views, which for me is like absolutely huge W. But we still felt like, because it's crazy... What's crazy to me is that these projects take so long. Like it takes, you know, several days of filming to do the challenge itself. And then it takes weeks of like, you know, because it's like 12 hours of footage and you want, you know, what's the one hour edit, you know what I mean? Or the 90 minute edit. So it's just like just tons of like back and forth with like Frankie and then voiceover and then animation. So like these projects are huge. So I feel like I've done a million of these, but really we've only done three. And so we're still just like learning. It's one of those things where there's a certain amount of like, I could watch the video over and over and over and over again and be like, I don't have any more notes. This is perfect. And then I hit post and watch it. And immediately I'm like, we should have done this differently. We should have done this differently. So there's a certain where you just like have to hit post because it's like, I want to learn and you just got to got to do it. Don't let perfect be the enemy of good. Yeah, 100%. So we posted that and then that finally found its home and people are really enjoying it. And but almost immediately I was like, we were taking notes and I was like, man, we should have done this differently. We should have done this differently. And so we, uh, it's been, a, it's been a while, but like me and Vel hopped back in and we did it. We're doing another challenge and we're doing a similar one. It's level one to 15 pistols only 
as opposed to Keter only. Because mm-hmm. I personally like 1 to 15 is like bite size. You know what I mean? If I'm yeah. doing like a 1 to 40 or like max traders, that's going to take me, it's either going to take my whole attention for like two weeks or it's going to take me like half and half for like a month or two. And that's just too much. But like we can bust out, you know, to 15 with some stupid handicap in like three days, you know what I mean? And then send it. Um, and and so we like tweak to the formula a lot of like adding almost like little side quests we have to do along the way and blah, blah, blah. But it's been it's been fun. We literally just got kicked in the nuts for six hours today. I survived three raids. It was just like it was awful. It was terrible. But it's just the way it is. It's fun. And what was what was what was rough about it? Was it like was it cheaters? Was it desync? Was it your pistol? It was like it was so in a in a in a challenge where like surviving, like if you can like. If you're trying to get to level 15, it's all about XP, right? Like how much XP is to level 15. If that's your challenge, you're trying to do that in the shortest amount of time. It's all about surviving because you get the XP mm-hmm. bonus. You know what I mean? You just get so much more XP when you're surviving in a row, especially if you're doing quests. And it was just like, like, I mean, it was like 11 raids today where it's like I'm walking or I'm running or I'm creeping. I am asleep. Game over. I just didn't even get, we didn't get any fights. You know what I mean? It was like, the yeah. whole point of the challenge is we're handicapping ourselves. So in the raids where like I got into a firefight with somebody and I either hit their head and it bounced the shot or I missed and they killed me. That's like, oh, GG's. That's the point. You know what I mean? It's like we're doing it with a pistol. It's going to be hard. Right. But it was just like, I'm asleep just over and over and over. It was like four raids in a row where like we did a raid and, you know, we spawned back by Big Red on marked on a dorm side so we were going down like the junk bridge by smuggler's boat on customs um, gotcha yeah 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 crossing to go up to dorms because we're doing like operation aquarius one of those early quests and like a level 40 dude with a shotgun he spawned by smuggler's boat and ran over to junk bridge and just laid prone what, in the bushes up? yeah he just laid prone in the bushes so like we just like boom and they're like okay and then we Went back and we went to a nighttime raid and in like just like the weirdest, most obscure area I had ever seen. I played thousands of customs raids and a super weird, most obscure area was it was level 55 Kappa just sit crouched like out in the open, like in a super weird spot. And as soon as we like ran through boom, we both died. Like, OK, and then we reset it. And it's like then we're coming out of dorms and a different day with a mutant crouched in a bush. Boom. And it's like. I'm not like one of those like, oh, Bush met a ruined Tarkov. But it just it was like six raids in a row where like the guy wasn't moving. And so I was just like I was losing my mind. But that's just that's just some days you get shit days. You know what I mean? Some days Tarkov is just like that. But I will say what's been fascinating is like I've been a little like surprised and delighted at how many pistol attachments are at level one traders. Like, yeah, it's almost been like kudos to you know what i mean because it's like yeah you don't want you know suppress you know five five six suppressors and meta hand guards and grips at level one but it's like you can buy a glock and buy a mount and buy a flashlight and get an optic for it all at level one traders you can dude when i when when i was when i played for like the couple of days that i played um, I had the best success grabbing a Glock, putting a dot and a yeah. laser on it and was owning. Yep. You can replace the iron sights if you don't want the dot for like the brighter iron sights that have like the green that are easier to see at night. You can, if you find a suppressor, you can get the threaded barrels at level one. There's like, you can get, you can barter for a P226. You can get a Grotch. You can get a Beretta. You can barter for like a USP. You can get a Glock. You can get, so I was like, this is. And that was kind of why I wanted to do pistols because I would say it's harder to do the challenge with a pistol than with a Keter because the Keter's got no recoil and it's full auto, right? So you can just like, like you can yeah. leg somebody so much more effectively. It's really hard to leg somebody when you, it's semi-auto and you're clicking, you know what I mean? You have to click that fast and not miss. But what's nice about it being harder was that there was like variety. There's like more guns, more attachments. Like you can't even put an optic on the Keter. You know what I mean? So like we, yeah. so that's been fun. Are there any attachments? Oh, it's just like the little rail. Yep. Where you can put a PK-06. The Raiders have a PK-06 and a flashlight on it. But you can't get that attachment until you're like higher level traders. So for our yeah. 1 to 15 run, there was no, no attachments. It was literally just suppressed or unsuppressed Keter. 
Um, so this has been nice that it's like switching it up and we're doing stuff and like kudos to like, I was like, this feels good that you can get like attachments and stuff like that. The problem is, is that the ammo is all balanced around SMGs, which makes sense, right? Because yeah. if you can get an MP5 at level one traders, which you can, then you can't have good ammo at level one traders. Because then yep. on day one of the wipe, everyone's just running the MP5 going crazy. But that means if you're trying to use pistols on day one of your account, you got nothing. You know what I mean? It's like 8 pen 14 damage. It feels like it's like you're not effective at leg meta. It's not effective at penning armor. It's just bad. It's just... I think I was using GT. Yeah, GT. PSO. That's all you can get. Um, and... And then the only thing that surprised me, because I was thinking through, like, at one point it crossed my mind, this is a bad idea, definitively. But at one point it crossed my mind, I was like, I wish there was ammo that only pistols could use, you know what I mean? Um, because I want I, yeah, I want there, there to be some sort of, like, incentive or buff to using pistols or whatever. Well, maybe they give us 30 rounds of, yeah. of whatever well, on every reset. Yeah. Well, here's the thing, it, though. It's one magazine and then, you know, or, oh, or and an three. SMG. Yeah. True. Yeah, or, you know, y yeah, you, you, you put the you put like five rounds of, you know, AP nine mil yeah. in the top of your Glock mag. Yeah. Um, A barter. Because usually because usually you're going to go up, 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 up and either they die or you die. Yeah. You yeah. know, you don't very rarely go through seven, you know, Glock mags. Yeah what and survive yeah a barter for ap 6.3 at level one traders would make sense because like for a box of 30 because yeah. at level one traders you don't have access to the flea market like by the time you're like level 15 16 17 that's when you're getting level two of most of the traders so you wouldn't be able to get it on re you would literally have to like go and look for things because that's that's the the qualm i have with most of the barters is it's just like an extra step in buying something because you just have to you buy it off the flea market and do that. But like a barter for like 10 or 15 would be kind of nice to be able to like top load a few or something. But what I will say was, so that was what I was thinking originally. Obviously, I don't want an ammo that only works with pistols. But the thing I the thing I do almost want to gamify because I don't shoot enough to know if this is realistic or not. And I don't care is the accuracy is bad. Like, it's like, you know, they're all like, and once again, I don't know how realistic it is or whatever, but they're all like 12 to 15 MOA. And like, there are, there have been times where, I mean, I'm like 10 meters, 15 meters from a scab that hasn't detected me yet. Crouch, I've got the Burris dot on it right on the head. And it's like, pew, and it's just like, pew, pew, pew. And I don't move and eventually one will hit. You know what I mean? And you're like, oh, damn. <laughs> like, yeah, I mean, that, and that's the the actual moa aspect of it isn't uh, i mean as far as i know is not realistic yeah. at all but it's also unrealistic to be able to hold your hands perfectly still Steady. yeah so in my like it my guess is that that just is kind of there to make up for the fact that you can hold your breath and have perfectly still hands that's true when when it's like even if you have very steady hands yeah, that's at a hundred meters or, or at a hundred meters is is you're completely missing the paper. Yeah, or not, you know what I but mean. But I almost wish in the video game, I wish pistols almost had like perfect accuracy because yeah. you're like in a game in a video game you're handicapping your handicapping handicapping yourself so much, right? Like I'm shooting PST at a target with a helmet at fifty meters away if i hit a nasty shot let me hit the shot i'm not gonna kill him anyway let me hit the shot at least you know what i mean it felt like several it times forces, forces you to panic yeah like it, it basically i'm just gonna go pop 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 yes. because any individual shot is a coin flip yeah and you and you have to hit yeah three mm -hmm. so oh my god is that a baja blast no it's a oh, okay. major melon i do love I, me my some... wife Baja she blast. brought me home Baja Blast oh, yesterday. It surprised me. So I was like, good. Oh, yeah. Sorry, off topic. So, so like, I almost wish that the accuracy was better. It literally felt like a few times, not a lot, but a few times I died because the accuracy. Like, I, like, went back and watched the clip, and it's like, dude, I'm on. 
I'm on this dude. You know what I mean? And I'm missing shots. So like, did you have tracers and could you see that you missed or could it have been hit reg? Wink, wink. Yeah. I mean, uh, I mean, we use green tracers a few times. Um, but, uh, (laughs) but what what else was I going to say? Yeah. The accuracy thing. I can't remember. Yeah. I, I just feel like they should be a little bit more accurate, but it's been a, it's been fun. I don't know. It's just something, it's just something different. You know what I mean? It's it's different to create content for like YouTube and be have some sort of goal and reason that's not like a huge goal, like a new account, hardcore accounts level forty two, but it's just something fun to do and whatever. So uh so that's been fun. We like rediscovered ground zero. Like I played that map four raids and then we cause like on wipe day which is like hardcore pressing quests, right? So you get the like four quests done on ground zero and then we're gone. We never came back. By the time I wanted to again, I was level 30 and I couldn't, you know what I mean? So we like rediscovered that map, which was fun. Um, but uh, but yeah, other than that, the only other like Tarkov news is the update that they did today where they added the ability to purchase uh cosmetics on the website is that a new yeah so it was forever ago it was when the when we first had the conversation about like microtransactions in tarkov they said that they were going to sell three things the offline mode stash expansion and clothing but they released them one at a time they updated the their back-end website and then they added the ability to purchase offline then, like, two weeks ago, they added the ability to purchase the stash space. And then today was when they finally added the the cosmetics. So you can pick USEC and Bear. And you can buy clothes for both. Because if you just chose Bear, you would have these unlocked. If you chose USEC, you would have these unlocked. And it's three sets on either side. Which was surprising to me. I don't know how much I th- how many I thought there would be. But it's like, right now, there's, like, 12 different, like, top and bottom sets in the game. But if there's three bear ones you can buy, three USEC ones you can buy. Uh, the lowest tier of each is five dollars. Then the middle one is seven, and then the top one is twelve. So it's like twelve, seven, eight, nine, nineteen, twenty-four dollars each. So forty-eight if you wanted to buy all three sets for USEC and bear, which I don't think anybody will. But forty-eight bucks for it all. Um. It's it's interesting because like it, I don't know people are uh, pe- honestly there hasn't been that big of a stink about it. I thought it was going to be there was going to be a bigger stink. The only thing that I've been hearing which I can kind of get with is like I wish that there were they were unique clothing. Yeah. Because like some of the ones that like the twelve dollar one on each side are ones that like you need to be like level 50 or level 55 to get. So in the game right now, if you see somebody with the urban responder pants, you know that they like, they have to play the game enough to get to level 50 and spend 6 million rubles on those pants. And, but now that's $12. So day one of the wipe next wipe, I'm going to be rocking the urban responder pants (laughs) and top. So it would be kind of, it would have been cool if they were like bespoke ones that, but then I feel like the flip side of that is if they put bespoke ones up for sale, the people that really liked them would be tweeting that they were mad that you could only buy them and that you can't earn them in game. Does that make sense? So I feel like mm-hmm. it's one of those like you can't win situations. I understand that criticism and almost agree with it, but there's an, an almost exact weight of criticism the other way if they had done that the other way. So that was fascinating. Aye, aye, aye. But the trifecta of of uh, uh, microtransactions has has been complete. Everything they've said they were gonna do. So now everybody's like, when gamma, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like when are they gonna sell the gamma or some other edition of the game or whatever? <laughs> I don't know. I like. I really don't care, personally. Um, that that they're like i i can acknowledge and agree like you said like they said they were never going to do microtransactions and now they're doing them and that is lame but um yeah i don't know 
I don't know. It's been fascinating to see. I don't care. I'm buying everything. <laughs> like Not everything, but I bought the Urban Responder. That's my favorite one. And I bought all the stash space. You better believe I did. Um, well, I don't know. I don't know. Are you buying? I don't know. Veritas? I, I, I'd have to look again to see. I probably, I probably wouldn't, but I also wouldn't yeah. care. Yeah. It's one of those things like, uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm the weirdo that, that likes the moment, the moment that like everybody is getting like the cool thing either because they can buy it or, or it's too easy to unlock Yeah, is the moment that like I, it, it it's no longer cool. I'm like a hipster. Yeah. I guess yeah, 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 yeah. when it comes to that. So like, <laughs> like I remember um, after getting to like 10th prestige in COD four, yeah, and like Modern Warfare two, or I, I forget if there were ten prestiges in that. Um, and then everybody was like third prestige, eighth prestige, whatever. At that point, it was like you know what you never see anymore: the five star level fifty five first prestige. So like I got a new Xbox Live account, and that was like my main account forever, and I just never prestiged. Because mm. it just felt cooler. Yeah. yeah. So like, all and all the new faces, all the new outfits. It's like I almost I almost like it more. Because it's, it's like the OG Tarkov to have the fucking Yusek one voice yeah. and the green fucking, like yeah, uh, you know, top and pants. Yeah. Um, the thing yeah. is though, is that like, <clears throat> and correct me if I'm wrong, especially like if you're in chat listening to this right now. I, like, I didn't think people looked at the clothing in Tarkov that way like i can see i really understand that in like mmos where like in world of warcraft there's this like cape or this armor or this thing where like this the only way to get it was you cleared this high level dungeon it was a badge of honor you know what i mean and and i like i can only tell you the level requirement of one outfit Actually, I don't know the level requirement for the Urban Responder top. I just know it's 55 for the pants because they're my favorite. So when I kill a guy that's in everything else other than the Urban Responder pants, I don't really know if he's high level or not. And, yeah. and I could be in the minority. That's what I'm saying. It's like I don't not... even know what, what the Urban Responder pants are. I think there's like one outfit that I actually like, and yeah. I don't think it's that. Like, they're... They're, uh, I could be wrong and people could like, I'm, I'm saying that people could see it that way, but I never thought of it that way. I never tracksuit is the only one, um, that you look at it and you're like tracksuit and the dead skull armband. You're like that guy got Kappa. I'll be, I, every time I die to that, every time I die to one of those guys, I'll always be like, oh, tracksuit gamer or oh, Kappa gamer always like instinctively because I know visually but if I kill a guy in the night patrol top versus the serum top versus the iron side top, I, I don't know. Like, you know what I mean? I'm looking at their stats at that point. So, I, see, but now that you can buy it, none of them are interesting except for still the. Can you buy the tracksuit? No, 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 no. Yeah. So then, well, it, but that's what I'm that saying point, is that like, what I guess what I'm trying to say is it didn't feel like they took something that was interesting and made it uninteresting. It feels like it was just always uninteresting not and not uninteresting because i liked the clothes i just i didn't i didn't realize people saw the clothes that way as like oh god this guy has the urban responder pants like i guess i didn't know there was an emotion to have lessened yeah you know what i mean because you have to have a strong emotional connection to something in order to feel that that connection was cheapened somehow you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah. Like if a Taco Bell taco goes up in 10 cents, I don't have a strong emotional connection to it. But if some my favorite thing somewhere goes up, I'm like, oh, come on. You know what I mean? So what I didn't realize is that people had strong emotional connections to anything other than the tracksuit, which didn't get cheapened. So I was a little surprised. Now, once again, that could just be me and I'm in the minority and people did have that emotional connection. And now that you can buy those three, like I, I'm, I'm not trying to put words in people's mouth. It just surprised me, uh, and I guess since it's only three, it'll just shift to the outfits that are not purchasable. Um, yeah. So 
I don't know. Um, but then, yeah, but then it's like it, it, like we talked about before, like with that video and stuff like that, it's like, it's fascinating to see the theories of like, you know, like somebody said a nice cash injection for them. Hopefully they put it to good, good use. Yeah, maybe like the thing is, is I didn't know. I wasn't under the impression they needed a cash injection. Maybe they do. Maybe they don't. Maybe they like, you know what I mean? So it's, it's, it's such a just nothing burger to me because if they were like, Hey, we need this because we need money to buy what to buy a better anti cheat. Obviously they would never say that, but then it's like, okay, well then you kind of have an understanding, but it's all just been made up. Maybe they just love money. Maybe Nikita just wants a mansion in Dubai. Maybe they're struggling to pay their staff. Maybe they're trying to do another anti cheat. Maybe they're working on Russia 2028 secretly. Like I can think of a hundred good reasons why I would actually love them to get another cash injection. I can think of a hundred reasons why they have a hundred different flavors. If they don't need it, they're just greedy and want our money. Maybe next week they start selling cat ear swordens and anime uwu skins. Maybe they never do that. You know what I mean? Like, cause that's another thing too. People think, people think it's an inevitability where now that they have sold this, they will start selling rubles. They will start selling skins. They will start selling anime waifu stuff. Like a lot of people think it's just like, once you break the seal, it's, you know, the slippery slope thing. It's not. And I was like, and it's just one of those things where it's like, you could make an argument for every one of those trillion possibilities equally. Like there's no real evidence of one over the other. So we're all just making it up. You know what I mean? Maybe tomorrow they do start selling rubles. Maybe they never do. Maybe they use this money to make crazy awesome DLC for this game. Maybe they spend it on hookers. You know what I mean? I have no idea. And I feel like we never will. You know what I mean? So I don't know. Time will tell. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's just, that's kind of where I'm at. That's kind of where I'm at. It's time will tell. Time will tell. And then, so like the gun camos thing somebody brought up in chat is really interesting too, because I feel like, um, like we've talked about how we've wanted gun camos in the game for a really long time. Now, if they add them into the game, the sentiment will be only they're adding them into the game so they can sell them to us later, which may be yeah. true or untrue. But either way, if gun camos come into the game, it won't be a thing that will be celebrated. Whereas if they came into the game two years ago, people would have been like, yeah, like this is Then sick. it would have been like, not fan service, but it would have been but like, yeah, like, for the like sake exactly of, of, of giving us what we want. But, but, and I'm not even saying what, what I'll be on that team a little bit. Like I wanted gun skins, but if they add them into the game now, I will be wondering in the back of my head, okay, how long until they sell them? How many other features too now, if they come you know? out with anything, are you going to think of? Vault, vaulting DLC. <laughs> yeah, dude. When can I buy better audio for this game? <laughs> like, holy, can you fucking imagine? I, I like that w would probably make me uninstall the game. I don't know. <laughs> that would be crazy. You know that you would you would buy it, and well, if it was course, better, you'd be you'd be happy. I'd buy it, and if it was better, I don't know if I, I would be happy, but I don't know if I could. I don't know if I could abide at that. You know what I mean? That's it's not gonna happen. This is, this is a fake thing. Um no and it is no. Um so uh oh yes yeah, so the point you were making was like any new feature added to the game there's going to be some kind of back of your brain thing where it's like oh I wonder if they're going to sell this. Yeah because I mean th th think about like I can see okay like skins clothes it, you know it makes sense that those are like purchasable things from other games right? Yeah. But like offline mode features that's crazy. That's like one of those things that like objectively doesn't, it shouldn't yeah, be a paid that feature. Is the it's heard that it's one a paid feature. So anything that they do, you know, like, okay, they're yeah. adding DLSS 7. Yeah. It's an extra, you know, like. Yeah, do you want to play is, our is game? Is that really conceptually different <laughs> than an progression? Offline? Pay us money for it. Like, what? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Because, Yeah. Even, Prime even, servers. even things like cases, you know what I mean? Like, because an argument is, could be made there where like, no matter how it's much, like stash space. it's a hundred percent stash. Like buying eye cases on the flea market is no, or uh, on the website is virtually no different than buying stash space and we can buy stash space. So do they sell cases? I'm when I was talking to one of my mods about today is like, do you remember like, 
three or four years ago, they showed us a picture of like the Omicron case, like secure container, and that never came into the game. And like, I'm, I would bet money. I, I can't remember exactly, but I'm pretty sure within the last 12 months, within the last actual year on one of the podcasts, <coughs> They said that like new secure containers were coming in one of these patches and then they, it never came mm. in the past two. So now I'm like, oh, shoot, people can't get the gamma anymore. In comes the Omicron 1299 or whatever on the on the store. Maybe. I, I mean, I'm making that up. I don't know that that's true, but. I don't know. You know what I mean? Oh, God, you know, it just occurred to me for so <laughs> long people were talking about like rmt and they were yeah. saying like they should just sell stuff to like fight against rmt and i remember being like i i remember answering with like they're oh. not doing microtransactions they're not doing it they're not going to do it like yeah. whether or not it, whether or not it would help yeah. or not i like never even entertained the idea yeah because i was under the impression the guy took their word for it right that yeah. they wouldn't have microtransactions so now it's like <laughs> Is that is that something on the table? Yeah. And is that like I mean you know if they sold, you know, if you could buy an item case for two ninety nine or something, would that make an appreciable dent in RMT? You know those kinds of things. Maybe maybe not. Yeah. Know, maybe maybe know. not. Who knows? Uh, I don't like I I say all that. You know I go down the <laughs> the logical kind of thought process there. I still don't think that they're gonna sell like rubles or gear. I doubt they'll sell cases, maybe a secure container, but like I doubt they'll sell cases. I think it's like, it's it's hard to, I think whenever you cross a line, uh, speculation can go rampant because like if you cross a line, how many lines will you cross? I think that there are lots of examples of games today that launch with microtransactions that are cosmetic only and stay that way forever. And nobody's ever worried about those games being like, oh, when are they going to add, you know, an XP boost or whatever, you know. But so it's not crazy. Some games do leave their microtransactions to cosmetic, non-gameplay affecting things. I think the thing about Tarkov is like you said, A, they said they were never going to do it. And even if they hadn't said they're ever going to do it, just the the fact... The fact of crossing a line, the that the instance of crossing a line of we had none, now we have some. I think that that just like lets people kind of go crazy. I don't think you know people people see the slippery slope slope is so slippery, like it's it's unavoidable. The greed consumes you. Like I think it's not that hard to like keep that moral stand on like, hey, no, we're not going to do that kind of stuff. Now, it would be easy for me to do that. But like I said, I can't predict the future. Maybe they do start selling rubles in a week. Like I'm not, I'm not here to say that I know for a fact or like put my reputation behind. I know they're never going to do it because friggin' maybe they will, but I don't think it's like an inevitability. You know what I mean? So, um, I don't know. It's just funny. It's just interesting stuff. And then also like, <laughs> it's just the classic I don't think any like it's it's the classic just internet talking big, right? Like everybody I know bought the stash space. <laughs> you know, dude, I was really surprised. Like uh, not long after that, the number of people that came in and were like, "Can you believe the fucking they added microtransactions?" And then like the next message was like, "Yeah, naturally, I bought whatever." Yeah, my yeah, a hundred percent. Holy shit, you know, hundred percent. So I do think that it's a thing people will freak out about. But like I said, less people freaked out about the clothes than anything else. Like I've seen less of a upswelling of people being mad. So I think it's like, I think most of the conversation around it is kind of just like, meh. But then we all either buy it or just ignore it and don't buy it and, and continue playing the game. Because I, I know a lot of chatters that have said, no, I'm not buying anything, which I respect the hell out of. But, uh, but I'm saying I don't think it'll have an, an effect on the game. I think some creators made like videos and posts about like you know this is the end this is this this is the beginning of the end this is the death and i th i don't think it will have any real impact on the amount of people that play the game uh or the future of the game as the transactions currently stand who knows about the future uh you know what i mean so 
anyways, that is uh that is the <laughs> that's kind of all that's going on in Tarkov. Uh, before we move over and talk about some of the stuff that they did to Arena recently, I do want to take a quick second and thank the first sponsor of the of the of this episode, and that is BetterHelp. We've worked with BetterHelp for a while. We love working with them. Uh, BetterHelp is an online platform where you can get linked up with a counselor or a therapist and um, work on, you know, whatever it is you need to work on. We've talked at length on, on this show about how impactful it's been to both of our lives. Therapy has been an integral part of both of our lives and getting us to where we are today. And I, I could not recommend it more to just about everybody. I think my big thing that I always like to, to hit on when we talk about this is that it's just as preventative as it is a solution to big things happening. Sometimes things just happen in your life. You lose a job, you lose somebody close to you, a relationship fragments, and having somebody to talk to, to hear you, to provide feedback and stuff is invaluable, but it's just as preventative of like, because when I went to therapy, we went years after what we went to therapy for was solved. Years, because it was just, we were like, oh, this is just great for everything to to yeah. just keep me more grounded and preventing things from happening. So, yeah. Yeah, I've 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 gone down the 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 therapy route a couple times before, and uh, one of the things that I disliked about the more traditional in person stuff was just how cumbersome it was. You basically call a number and they set yeah. you up with somebody without asking you any questions. You sit down with them. If you don't vibe with them for whatever reason, it's a lot harder to call on the <laughs> phone to talk to somebody or to say I don't want to see somebody, and then oh we can switch you over to someone else, and then be afraid you're going to see the guy in the hallway. You know, the next time you go for an appointment with someone else, yeah. with BetterHelp, I didn't jive with the first person that I uh, had my, you know, had my therapy session with. Yeah. And within three minutes of deciding I wanted to go see, you know, the what what it was like to go down the route of changing, it yeah. was like request I want to <laughs> switch, uh, you know, check a couple of boxes. Yeah. And boom, I was set up with somebody that now I've been talking to every week or every couple of weeks yep. for literally years now. And I, I can honestly say that um, like where I'm at mental health wise and just overall just happy, happiness wise yeah. is like 180 degrees from what it was like this time last year. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, yeah, it's awesome. It's easy. It's convenient. Uh, it's all online and it still retains like the personal because you're still talking to a human being but all the other aspects of it, of appointment scheduling, taking notes, whatever, stuff like that is so much cleaner and simpler. Um, so yeah, so whether you're going through something big, just feel like something's wrong, or if you're just like trying to figure out how to get the most out of your life, the most out of your time, having somebody to talk to can be very helpful. You can learn how to make time for what makes you happy with BetterHelp. Visit betterhelp.com slash podcast today to get 10% off your first month. That is betterhelp, H-E-L-P.com slash podcast thank you so much to better help for sponsoring this episode i was on speaking of i was on uh <laughs> coffee coffee time with uh with oh Gino. he dude so good he's so cool i did dude, that he's, too he's great I, I i call him a kid uh because everybody who's like not in their 30s is a kid to me um <laughs> but he's he's a good he's a good kid man he's a good guy he's such yeah, so genuine He's like gen like genuinely, he's the nicest guy in the Tarkov community. And yeah, that's saying probably. a lot because there are some really fucking nice guys yep. in the Tarkov community. Um, and we talked for three hours. Yeah. Uh about all kinds of things. Uh, you know, favorite video games of all time, you know, history as a content creator. But a lot of it was about some of the mental health stuff. Mm. And, and I and I have to say, he had a couple of very specific very specific like observations or experiences that were like it was so fantastic to hear because mm. me and you have had some similar experiences yeah. um that i think like i had for a while and you hadn't experienced but then after a certain while especially with tarkov yep. you know and then you basically getting like significantly you know you've grown a ton since when we yeah, first started yeah. the podcast um, you know, started to experience some of those challenges, but man, he had, he had a few things that was like, you're the first person, the first content creator that, that has experienced 
the idea of like or at least needing to like articulating it or talking about the this the cycle the struggle of like somebody wants to give you shit or criticize you or whatever and you want to engage with them actually treat them like a human being mm -hmm. while at the same time everything about this whole communication between like you and the user makes it so that like you're supposed to dehumanize them yeah they act like they want you to dehumanize them because they're like why do you care what i say and it's like well then why would you speak if you yeah. didn't think that i should care about what you know yeah yeah and, and and then how the whole idea of like you know saying like i don't care what anyone thinks is actually kind of absurd and like yeah um there was just so many little elements dude it was such a good talk i would recommend anybody yeah. go check that out because out it's, it's, it's criminally and his whole podcast coffee with gino he's interviewed me, Veritas, tons of other content creators ask great questions, great conversation. Yeah, for sure. Check out Veritas' episode, but just check out his podcast. Like, shout out to another homie in the podcast world. Uh, it's really cool. And the whole, like, yeah. core conceit of it is just, like, bring more positive vibes. You know what I mean? Like, it's all just yeah, about man. connecting with other creators. And, uh, yeah, he's a homie for sure. For sure. Yeah, and I think his, the on his YouTube, it, the, that, that, the episodes have like one or 200 views like it's yeah. criminal yeah it's criminal because it's what it's honestly one of the best conversations about content creation that i've ever had yeah um and uh yeah he's he's just such a awesome real down earth dude and he, and he puts a lot of work he puts in more work into his podcast than i do in this <laughs> <laughs> he's yeah. got fucking multiple pages of script all planned out and whatever and we mean you just fucking wing yeah. it you know <laughs> so I, I get so much respect for that dude for sure a hundred percent, hundred percent. Shout out Gino. Um, where am I? Okay. Did you see? Oh my God. Where's my tab? Okay. I'll just open the new one. Uh, the arena update today. No, nope. um, I know nothing. I know nothing. You John know Snow. nothing, Jon Snow. Indeed. Well, why does this happen? When is it do it? Okay, patch notes. Ba, 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 ba. List of changes. Added unranked game mode. <laughs> nice. Um, so they added unranked. Unfortunately, it's just uh it's just the same as ranked. <laughs> like the ARP doesn't matter, but I was hoping that they would have either unlocked some of the other modes that they have previously confirmed like the pve mode or duel or that they would have done like team fight but then they would have like a lot of games do like rotating variations where it's like you can do regular team fight or you can do you know this week we have bolties only you know what i mean and it's just like a fun whatever and there's always like a rotating thing i was hoping that they were going to add a little bit more but they added uh team fight and shootout, uh, they removed the team restriction for selecting duplicate presets. So, like, all five of you can run the same preset and unranked. Which presumably helps that, that makes sense. squads of people, like, grind kits, you know what I mean? And, like, actually play. There were so many times where me and Hambino were both going down the same tree. And we were just staggered enough where I would unlock my next kit, which was the one he was using. But he hadn't unlocked his next kit. So he was still using that. So then I would just like stay up at the worst kit. So like I couldn't use my tier two kits and I couldn't even use my best tier one kits because we were all I was we were all trying to do. So like that'll be better. You know what I mean? You can. So but you're still it's it's still the same progression. Yeah, I'm still progressing to the same kit, but I want to be using the kit that I unlocked. You know what I mean? But he was still using it. So that's kind of what I was like, have been thinking this whole time where everyone's like, I just can't wait until unranked. And like I get, I get it, but at the same time, it's like I I don't exactly understand why it's really better, because for well for a couple of reasons. One, especially if you're a lower skill, mm -hmm. you're just going to be playing. Like all that does is open up that you're going to be playing against much harder opponents. A and <laughs> B, 
it is kind of only relevant if you were playing and you couldn't use the kit that you wanted to use, which yeah. I don't know how often that is f the case for people. Um, I'm sure it's non-zero, but the yeah. question is, is like, I don't know. For sure. For me, I'm interested to see what the matchmaking is like in Unranked as far as like how often, because here's the thing, and maybe this is privilege, right? We were relatively high ARP. I was nowhere near even on the leaderboard, but I was higher than average ARP, which meant every time I've played Arena, after two days after the wipe, it's devolved into I'm only playing Giga Sweats, who are objectively much better than me at the game, but they don't have anyone to fight, so they fight me, and I fight the same three teams, and they're all much better than me, and I'm having no fun. That doesn't mean I want to go to unranked and pub stomp plebs all day, but like the game just wasn't servicing people at my skill. It was just, I was just only playing people that were much better than me. And I was playing those same three teams over and over again. So are we now, interested to, to fair, see what unranked is like? I think a lot of that has to do with, like, I could say the same, but I would also in my heart of hearts know that a massive amount of that had to do with the fact that we were five man squatted up with people who were at a, at my skill level or higher. So like if I was solo queuing, mm -hmm. I wouldn't be winning 70% of the time. I'd be winning 54% of the time, which means my ARP would be slightly lowered down. So it's like, but that's what I'm saying. I felt like I was playing in a five stack losing 70% of the time. And still just only like, obviously, I guess that's not true, right? Because the ARP was still high enough to be put out of like the normie brackets or whatever. But once again, it just didn't feel like I wasn't, I was just, oh, I, I always felt like I was, we were playing teams that were much, much better than us. So I, so I'm interested, I'm saying I'm interested to see how the matchmaking is going to be for people. The thing is, is I don't really want to play arena though. So I'm not going to be able to get that question answered. Um, yeah. But yeah, but I will say that niche circumstance happened to me almost exclusively where like several people in our five stack were going assault. And so we were all trying to use the same presets. And so I was like stuck using a shotgun or something else that I didn't want to use because I didn't want to force Ham was on that kit before me. I didn't want to force him off that kit. I wanted to use that kit. Like, yeah, and a part of that problem is because so the first level kit you use, it's like two games and you're out of it. Okay. Yeah. The second one is like five games and you're out of it. And then you're stuck on the third one for 800 years. It, yeah. <laughs> and, and there's, and there's only one good path to go down. You know, usually yeah, there's like yeah. one. So, so really after five games, if you're squatted up with people, it's, <laughs> you either have to all be in a different tree. Yeah. Or so like if there were more options or you weren't limited by sitting there having to play for 9 billion years until you can uh, use the thing you unlocked Correct. a week ago, then it wouldn't be a problem, right? Like these are all problems they created. Cor that's a good way so to that's put why it. It's... That's a good way to put it. Regardless of if there was a better way to solve this problem, i.e. better design from the start, it's nice that in unranked, like either way, it's nice that in unranked right now, I can use the kit I want to use. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yep. Um, they reduce the minimum number of uh, selected locations to one. So in unranked, you can just like run bowl nonstop if you want, um, which they took that away from the ranked mode. Um, increase the cash rewards. So in tier ones, the cash rewards are up 20%. In tier twos, they're up 30%. And in tier threes, they're up 45%. Um, and then on the career screen, player stats are divided into ranked and unranked. <coughs> um so, yeah, I don't know. Uh, I don't know. Like, I, I have been a big proponent. So, like, I have been one that's that said I want, I want it unranked. I want unranked. I want unranked. I want unranked. And I think a big part of that for me is that, like, I don't care about. Like, I just, I wanted, and this is a very singular thing, right? I'm not saying that I'm representative of the player base, but I wanted Arena as a turn my brain off game. And because yeah. it was exclusively ranked, it was just like, if we're doing well, 
if I'm having fun, this fun has an expiration date because we're going to have fun until we hit an ARP threshold where I'm going to get slapped in the face. And then that's not fun. And then we get slapped in the face until our ARP threshold goes down. And that's just like not my vibe, right? That being said, I played enough arena through the wipe and then through the tournament that like this isn't enough to make me really want to go back and play right now because the other 50% of why I wanted unranked is is the other game modes. Like I wanted yeah, to see yeah. what duel was like. I wanted to see what um, the PVE one was like. Uh, and I, I really want there to be like other game. I like I like if I even with the unranked right now, I'd probably want to play unranked just to see what it's like. But the only reason I would want to go back is just um, for custom games. You know what I mean? Like it's just with the homies, no ARP, nobody cares about wins or losses. Like the turn, the turn your brain off game. You know what I mean? But then there's no progression. I can't be working on getting towards better kits or something like that. Like you can in unranked. Like uh, presumably the XP is still you're grinding to your kits which is nice so, and yeah. i feel like that's i feel like that's not an insignificant thing like like the progression that's why that's why i got sick of playing yeah because i knew that i had 20 hours more with my vidyas before i was going to yeah. be able to use anything and yeah. at that point <laughs> at that point there's effectively no progression yeah because it's so far off in the future yeah that it's like okay i i i'm yeah, I don't, don't want to feel like be... I'm progressing anything. Yeah. yeah. There's no milestones in the next 20 hours. Sorry, yeah. I'm interested, right? Yeah. You know, it's would you want to work out for five years and then after the five year mark, you're fucking jacked and ripped, yeah. right? But nothing in between. Yeah. It's like, nah, I need, I need that incremental yeah. Yeah, 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 strength yeah, yeah. increases and whatever before, <laughs> you know, in order to get me there. So Yeah. So yeah, I I I was so it's hard because what I'm trying to say is I was a big advocate for unranked. I was like unranked, 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 unranked. And now they gave it to us. And I do want to give them props for that. I don't know if the feedback from the community accelerated their timeline. Like if they gave unranked because the community wanted it, I want to be like, that's cool. I'm glad they did that. I think that what unranked was in my brain was a more complete package than what we got, which is literally like just team fight and shootout, no adjustments, no free, free for all mode, no PVE mode, no one V one mode, no, uh, cool modes that are like specific kits. No, like someone in chat mentioned, like, what if there was like a mode where you could use all the kits, everything was unlocked, but you're still progressing. Like you'd only use everything in this game mode as a way to like figure out what guns you like or whatever. Um, so I want to be like, I'm glad they did it, but because going back means that same progression curve you just talked about, like going back to unranked doesn't increase, it doesn't decrease the amount of time until I can get to tier two or tier three kits. And it Actually, doesn't wait a change the formula of what I do while I get there. Someone just said, I just noticed I only have three tier two kits unlocked, but I can queue for tier two unranked. So Interesting. maybe you'd think they would put that in the patch notes. Did they? So and I may... missed it? Because that is significant. That's that a significant, is significant. That's massive, right? Because then it's like, okay, well, then I can. It's almost like I can grind. Not necessarily. Not, yeah, I guess grind, like grind out the progression, but less shittily. Yeah, that is significant. Um, oh, right, right, because they allow... So, they allow... Because you can double up on oh. kits, then there's no reason to have the limit because the limit is not there. It's literally only there because they have a problem yeah, 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 yeah. that they needed to solve by adding this can arbitrary anybody, limitation. Can anybody confirm? Like, I, I want somebody with only one Tier 2 kit unlock to queue up into Unranked and see if you can queue Tier 2s. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. did they, because because you're absolutely right. They only made it five because they limited the kits to one. Well, if now there is no limit on kits, did they make it where you can only have one tier two kit or did they actually like set a limit and it went from five to three? You know what I mean? They, yeah. That's not in the patch notes, which that would have been the most exciting thing for me because <laughs> I that would have been the most exciting thing for me because yeah, then if I grinded to like, two or three tier three kits and could use them in unranked that changes a lot 
Interesting. Yeah. So so that that makes the change make more sense. More sense. Yeah. Um. Then th th that adds a, a more reason to 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 play on excited for unranked. Yeah. 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 Okay. That's cool. That's cool. That's cool. I just I just wonder. I'm worried about all the people that are, are have been under 1500 ARP. Yeah. Just not having a good time. Yep. If they're going to be playing against us now. Yeah. Yeah. And that's why I'm saying like, I'm interested to see what the matchmaking is like because I wouldn't really have that much fun either. I know people don't believe us. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like people love to think that like everybody just wants to smurf and dumpster people. I have the most fun when the games are close. That is the most, like, it's more fun to me to go 5-4 than 5-0. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's like, if I hopped on unranked and won 20 games in a row 5-0, I would, I would probably stop because, like, that, I, that does, that's not fun. You know what I mean? Like, I, I have the most, so I'll be interested to see how their matchmaking works. Is it completely random? Is it, is there some other kind of thing where like they take your the gear or I guess you're choosing tier two kits, tier three kits. You're, like, you're choosing now, a like, tier. It, it implicitly has gear score, you know? Yeah. So in. maybe that's it. Like it's you could. But then could could you could guys like us theoretically just tier Q1 and or tier now, one. See, I'm, I'm all for that. Yeah. That, I mean, that, that's that's how I started. Yeah. Gaming COD four. I would go in. I would play cage match. One yeah. on one, and I would go ten and zero. Yeah, every game. Now, granted, one out of every ten games, there'd be somebody that would be close, yeah. and my heart would be like racing. Yeah, uh, you know, but beca mostly because I wanted to avoid the like fuck you, bitch, chipper, in like the Xbox. Yeah, mess yeah, yeah, voice yeah. Messaging after the fact. Um, but uh, but yeah, I mean, so like, I definitely, especially for. A game, like you said, I want to turn my mind off. Yeah. I just want to shit shit on kids, you know, until I die, mute, hit play on Netflix. Yeah, you know, yeah. like I, but, I, I'm. That's why I would want to play Arena. Yeah. Is not to care, <laughs> not to sweat. I almost like the, uh, I almost like the tier system more for unranked because of that reason. It's like if I'm going tier one. Like, I like that I won't be able to use the butcher kit and stomp on people that are brand new to the game. Because if I choose yeah. the butcher kit, I'm in tier three and they don't have tier threes unlocked yet. Now, if I want to go, if somebody wanted to go stomp on them, you have to use the, <laughs> the terrible guns. So, like, I almost like the tier system better that way. It's almost a little bit of a check there. Of course, people are going to smurf. They are going to go tier one kids, you know, who are really good at the game to do that. But at least it won't be butcher kits, you know, killing you at least, you know. So that's, I mean, that's fascinating. That does make unranked a little bit more. I still, me, I still really wish they would have added some other game modes. Maybe they will soon. But, uh, but that definitely... That change, I'm so surprised they didn't put that. Maybe they just assumed that's what everybody would know that when this says reduce the minimum number of selected, lo or not locations, but uh, remove the team restriction for selecting duplicates. But they should have put that in the patch notes. I mean, that's that's the biggest, the most important. The most thing. important change, yeah. Uh, the other things was they reduced it. They reduced it. Woof. They reduced the preset purchase time from 90 to 45 seconds. Um. You know how you're just always waiting? Nine people have picked their preset and you're waiting on the one person who's AFK. Literally yeah. every arena match, that's just, it'll kick you into the game in 45 seconds now instead of 90. And reduce the match accept timer from 30 to 25 seconds. Okay. Um, <laughs> added a volume setting for the arena announcer. The, Holy shit. The minimum Every, everyone instantly turned it all yeah, the way down. The minimum volume is 30% of the current volume. So you can't turn it off. Oh fuck off. But you can get it, you can turn it down 70%. Uh added a volume setting for the match acceptance notification. Same thing. Minimum volume is 30% of the current value. Um reduce the VoIP. <laughs> reduce the volume of the turn on and turn off noises of the radio. The like 
and in and those are the only parts of the uh, i like that i don't like the okay i'm done <laughs> but i like the bloop, like the, or the ch- well they're I still like there little clicks. they're yeah. just reduce the volume increase the overall volume of radios which i'm assuming just increase the voip volume oh so i just got to turn it down more i guess <laughs> um gotcha 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 I didn't even read this until just now. Monka. Praise. No, this is so good. Experience exceeding the amount of needed for the currently selected preset will be carried over to the next preset. Oh my god. Thank Christ. That's that's a good quality of life update. That was so frustrating. That happened to me like three times. I got like within a hundred XP, then I frag out and get eleven K XP and it all just disappears. Um. Yep. Yeah. Uh, harder penalties for killing allies in a match. Uh, reduce the number of kills for a warning penalty from four to three. I didn't even know that was a thing. Reduce the number of kills for the offending player to be kicked and blocked from six to four. Uh, added the offended offending player block for killing and damaging allies before the gates open. The player is instantly killed and a warning is issued if they damage or kill an ally. On a repeat offense, the player is instantly kicked from the match and blocked from matchmaking for 30 minutes. If the player repeats the offense further, the punishment will be increased. Oh, great. So when there's a fly hacker in my game, I can't... uh... Yeah, you can't kill him before the gates open. Uh, the statistics displayed on the rating screen will now only count the results of ranked games. Fix several issues causing the game accept screen to be missing missing for some group members. So that's it. <coughs> that's the arena patch. Um, I mean, like, there's nothing in that patch that's an L. You know what I mean? That I can think of. Like, only progress, right? Yeah. To their credit. I... Uh, I'm, I'm so interested to, I would love to like hear from them on what the plan is for the, for the alternate game modes. Maybe that like, maybe that, maybe they're just doing it slow breadcrumbs. You know what I mean? Maybe they'll add that soon now that unranked is in, but like, you know, we both talked about how we're dying for like the free for all. Like that would be fun. I forget what it's called. Like last hero or something like that. Like that would be fun, dude. You know, cause that's, that is one of the things like arena is fun. Like arena can be fun in the right setting. But it is deafening sometimes. You got the announcer, you got the crowd, and you have four other people in a Discord call, right? Like, it would be kind of fun to just, like, vibe solo arena. Like, that would be your yeah. jam. Hours, like, if, if arena was cooking, you know what I mean? Just, like, I could see you on for 12 hours, free-for-all, just cruising. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, that could be super fun. Um, so, I'm just, like, that's a big thing. I'm just, like, so interested to see what their, like, roadmap for that is. Uh especially since they seem really committed to like this new system, like the tier system and everything. I can get it when they were like trying to rework the system and how it worked, but so I don't know. Uh, but yeah, nothing I can say. I can say maybe I wish I would have, uh, I wish there was more, but I can't really say anything in the patch is an L. And so that's good that they're continuing to make progress, that this seems like a pretty significant patch, not too long after their wipe and uh, everything is moving. They did the hit reg thing. I don't know if you've played or if anybody has played the last week we talked about that they did a, a patch that was hit reg. I don't know if you've played since yep. then. Have you? No. I yeah. Okay. Me either. I don't know if people have noticed that. Um, but yeah. Uh, so that is, that is arena. And that is the Tarkov stuff. And before we move on, cause I do have some other stuff that I want to talk about. I do want to take a quick second and thank the second sponsor for the stream. And that is Mando. Mando uh, deodorants, body wash, uh, deodorant wipes. They are really actually great. So uh, they've done some really cool like uh, studies with people. Like uh, they set up some funny studies where they like had people shower with soap and then like how at how many hours do they feel like they smell and then they do it with they like Mando and then at how many hours. And it was just like funny, memey stuff, which I find to be hilarious. Um but uh, 
their deodorants and body washes and and what do they call it? It's it's whole body deodorant is what they call it because yeah. what they advertise it is that it can go on your armpits, they say on your packages, uh on your feet, on um anywhere, your stomach, wherever you feel like smells, you can put it. And it's kind of great because I used to travel a lot when I was like in my band and stuff like that. And sometimes you want something that's in between a shower. Like I don't have time to go take a second shower today, yeah, but you yeah, just yeah. want that. Like I want to like refresh, you know what I mean? So like, dude, sometimes it's nice. It's nice to have something you can put anywhere, but it's still deodorant. And then they have their deodorant in like their actual same thing, their whole body deodorant in like the stick that you can get. And then they also have it in like a, almost like a lotion. It's yeah, the yeah. same stuff. It's just like if you, so you could just use the lotion and put it on the pits, whatever, or you could use that to put on your feet or what. So it's kind of nice and convenient and smells really good. Dude, it smells so good. I got to say the, the, I don't know if you got the same as I did, but uh, the orange and red, I think it's like the bourbon, the bourbon leather. leather. Yes. I, see, here's the thing to me. It, it didn't smell like bourbon leather. Yeah. It smelled almost like it was like sweet and citrusy. And I, I'm so, I need to buy more because I, I just had the small. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I kept like the last amount for like, I'm like, I can't use it today. I don't want to be done with it because it smells so <laughs> Dude, good. My wife loves the smell. It smells like when people that try to convince me to drink bourbon describe a bourbon to me. It's what I think it should smell or taste like. And then I taste it. I'm like, this is disgusting. But it smells like, yeah, it smells like like the best parts of it. It is a little citrusy, but it's got kind of like the leather. Like it just feels like sitting in a broken in couch by a fire. I don't know. It's good. The other one that smells really good is the Fiji, Mount Fiji or whatever. Mount Fiji. Yeah, yeah. I think that one smells really good too. Um, So uh, yeah, so it's awesome. It's uh, baking soda free, paraben free, uh, pH balanced. Uh, they, they advertise that it can block odor, keep odor under control for up to 72 hours, uh, created by a doctor um, who was uh, misdiagnosed and mistreated. Uh, in the past for BO and stuff like that. So it's cool, man. And uh, they're uh, they're made from the same company that makes Lumi deodorant. And their starter pack includes the, uh, you can pick your scent of the solid stick and you get the cream, which is a whole body deodorant. And you get a mini body wash and you get, which I think is kind of cool, the wipes. They're not just wipes. They're like scented with their scent wipes. Because I've used yeah, wipes man. before, a lot of like unscented ones to just like once again almost get like a quick shower. And so the fact the fact that you almost have like deodorant in the wipe and you can just wipe all those areas, boom, 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 and then you smell good. Uh so it's kind of sick. Uh Dude, it's been so long since I've had any kind of scent anything. I don't wear cologne or whatever. So just having like I don't have to use my wife's shampoo anymore. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um so the Mando Starter Pack, perfect for uh, for new people, comes with a solid stick, the cream tube, two free products of your choice, the mini body wash and the deodorant wipes, all with free shipping. And as a special offer for podcast listeners, new customers can get $5 off the Mando Starter Pack with code podcast at shopmando.com. That equates to over 40% off your starter pack when you visit shopmando.com. That is S-H-O-P-M-A-N-D-O.com and use code podcast. Or five dollars off your starter pack. So thank you so much to Mando for sponsoring this episode. Mm. Mm. <clears throat> now, all that being said about the Tarkov stuff, the only other like thing, I guess, like gaming news related thing, is uh, Gray Zone Warfare, which we've talked about before and how excited released. It was like twenty three minutes. It was like four of the devs going out and completing a mission, um, and they. <laughs> yeah. What? I'm just like, oh, I, I can, the, I can talk more after tomorrow. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Let yeah, me. Yeah. I'll, I can't. Well, I think you can phase. say, because a bunch of people have, everybody has. Oh. Okay. Well, I don't know. I don't. I don't know. But. Anyways, I'm. 
I'll wait till tomorrow. Yeah, 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 yeah. But they released the footage. Did you see the footage? Uh, I see the didn't see the footage. Okay. Because I didn't have to, but yeah, I did. I did. Yeah, 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 yeah. So here, so it's funny because I was super hyped after it. Um, and there was a lot of like, I mean, as to be expected, right? Like there, there's a certain level of it to be expected. And then a certain level that I was like, oh, interesting. Um, <clears throat> of course you get the like, this is Tarkov, but reskinned. This is, this is like, there, there were so many like, those gun sounds are from PUBG. The, the, that looks just like Tarkov. This looks like Daisy. It's like, oh, so you're saying they made a different game than all those. Like, it's just, oh my God, that gets to me so much. It has an M4. This is a Tarkov knockoff. You know what I mean? Um, but it was, uh, but then there were some really like genuine criticisms of the footage because like we didn't see him loot anything. Like they didn't loot any of the NPCs that they killed. You know, we don't know what the, like the, the home base is like if what the traders was like, what the mission, what they, what they got as a reward from the mission, how much XP, how much leveling. So there were some really genuine criticisms on the fact that we saw this mission, but we didn't see like the game. Like, what are we doing? Why were we on this mission? What's the point of the mission? What else would I be doing on this mission? Like what, what would I be looking for? It was very, a lot of people called it scripted, but I think they tweeted that they had to delay the footage because like they, the devs couldn't beat the mission. So I don't think it was scripted as in like mm. super scripted. I think they knew what the mission was about and they ran it until they got a good run, but they were definitely like RP walking around, right? Like nobody really sprinted, you know, it was very, nobody looted anything. So it's obviously not super representative of, it's like the difference between a Tarkov trailer and a Tarkov raid, right? Like in a Tarkov trailer, it's full RP, but in a raid, you're freaking and then like running to a loot spot. Like it looks nothing like the trailer. So it was a little bit like that. Um, for me, I am just so like coped out for this game because the environment looked insane. Like the map just looks like you should just pull up the IGN thing and just like scrub right, through I, it. I'm looking yeah. at it. Yeah. Um, yeah. The environment looks insane. And the biggest thing for me is just like my stomach like dropped with excitement just when the helicopter takes off. And I'm just like, dude, just this huge open world map. Oh my God. And the concept of like infilling and extracting while you're on the map. I don't know. I'm just freaking. It looks cool. I'm not convinced this game is going to be phenomenal or kill Tarkov or save gaming or any of the dramatic things. It's just like, I have wanted this exact video game for so long. I really hope that they don't, but like with it, like I really hope it's playable when it releases. You know what I mean? It's, I mean, <laughs> here's the deal. It's, it's going to be exactly what so many people want and not what yeah so many other people want. For sure. And that's just the, you're you're either going to be heads or tails of that coin for sure for sure um you know if if the idea of playing with a squad and one of your squad mates dies and they can be back with you in about five minutes they just have to get geared up hop in a helicopter go to yes. the you know oh my god okay oh. Uh, some, some even... people i know some people hate that idea for whatever reason i can't say that they're wrong it's subjective yeah um i like i wish that that's what tarkov had that's what that's yeah. what we said like two years ago when we were basically talking about what tarkov could be with like yeah. daisy open world server yeah you know whatever um yeah yeah a hundred percent dude like that that's the thing is like so people keep asking me what i think of the footage the footage to me was nothing more than showing it's a real game and a proof of concept for what the game could be. I don't think that as a result of that footage, I'm like, oh my God, they showed it. It's going to be perfect. Like the game is like, yes, they did it. Like, yeah, it was just them RP walking around for 20 minutes and killing 10 AI. It wasn't that exhilarating, but it was just exciting for me to see the world and see the map because 
what I'm super excited for about that game. And, and see, here's the thing here. Here's like, this is, I guess me verbalizing what I have never been able to verbalize before. What I'm excited about for gray zone warfare isn't the sound of the guns. It isn't the number of attachments. It isn't the, what it's, it's the map. Yep. It's the open world. It's exactly like you said. It's being able to... How many times today did we, like... Okay, how many times today? Me and Valiant are doing this challenge, right? So, like, we spawn in, and I get one tapped from a dude with Magnum Buck to the face. Then Valiant kills that guy. And then the expectation is, like... The expectation is, Velian, you need to get out of that raid as fast as possible because yep. we are doing a challenge together and I can't get back in there with you, right? So you have to get out of that raid as fast as possible, loot up and leave so then we can come back and like try this, you know, try this quest again or whatever. Imagine if that was flipped. Imagine if it was like, stay there, dude. I'll be back in five minutes. You know what I mean? Yep. Like. And I get it. Yeah. What, you know, like you can go get your gear back. That's lame. Well, sure. Whatever. I don't know. Like, I, like you said, subjective. I think the experience and the momentum and the flow of a play session being able to continue as opposed to just deflate like a balloon. Um, for me, that's exciting. Right. The uh, I'm actually working on a video um, about Gray Zone where I talk about like that the map is the big thing for me for like a few reasons. One, like think about how much time you spend in Escape from Tarkov in the menus. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? How much time do you spend in the menus? And even not necessarily the menus, how much time do you spend? Because there, there's going to be menus, right? You're going to have to go to the traders and you'll be in some sort of menu or some sort of stash menu, I presume. But how much time do you spend loading into a raid? How much time do you spend looking at the matching screen? Right? Like, yep. that is a significant time amount and of time all, of your play gone. session. That doesn't Basically exist. You load into the server one time and you're in that server until you're done playing the video, the video game in yep. Gray Zone. So that's one thing that I'm really excited about is just the 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 way I like worded it in my script, yeah, is the is the momentum and flow of a raid, like you know, or, or or of an experience of your of your game time session can be whatever you want it to be. You can take a break and slow it down whenever you want to take a break and slow it down. You could be aggressive for however long you want to be aggressive. Uh, you can get out when you want to get out. You can infill when you want to infill, but you're never beholden to, um. You never behold into like having to be out by a specific time. And even think about things like like depoting loot, right? Like in Tarkov right now, that's such a commitment. If you like, we, I'm going to do this mission, but I killed this Giga Chad. Or not even that, I'm going to do this mission where I have to like kill 12 scavs in this area. But I found the quest item I need. Like I need an ophthalmoscope. And then you make that decision where you're like, I should get out with this. But if I get out with this, then I have to wait, like load out, load back in, heal, go do some menu stuff, check if the traders restocked, and it's the gonna... games. The game is giving you conflicting motivations, yeah. And you and 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 that like it itself is is saying kill a bunch of scavs, but also don't die. Yeah. But also you want to play, but also you want to survive. So it always just feels like some part of your experience is sacrificed for sure. Um. For sure. So like the excitement of, of, of being able to like just do that and stay and remain in the game. Like, ooh, I found some really cool loot or I found something I need. Being able to like go find an LZ, head back to your like fob or whatever, depot that and but stay in the game. You know what I mean? That's exciting. And then the other <laughs> the other thing is uh like I'm really interested to see what like the player I'm really interested to see what the predictability is going to be like, because that is one of now that I'm uh, now that I have like, you know, seven, eight thousand hours in Tarkov. That is one of my biggest gripes with it. Like that is one of the things I wish is that uh, the raids aren't very dynamic. Of course, all the time. I literally was early complaining earlier about like, oh, I got killed by this guy who was in a bush. Like, I'm not saying I can predict every raid, but like 
I know where people spawn. I know where the closest spawns are to me. I know the predictable pathing. I know where all the good loot is. I know where all of my enemies need to extract. Um, I like, you know what I mean? I know if a boss is up that it's going to attract attention. I know after five minutes, player scavs are in and they're going to start pushing shots. I just like, I know when these things happen. Uh, and you can use a lot of that. You almost re are required to use a lot of that information. The number one, when people are like, I'm new to like tips for lighthouse, man. Like I'm, I'm pulling my hair out with the tips for lighthouse. My number one advice is learn the spawns. Learn, you have yeah. to, you have to learn the spawns when you, when you spawn, you have to know where the two closest PMC groups can be to you and how they can get to you. Because if you don't want to fight them, you need to know where they are so you can avoid them. And if you want to fight them, you need to get at them before they get at you. Right. So I'm super interesting. I'm super interested to see what the like predictability is going to be like. Imagine playing Lighthouse and all of a sudden, <laughs> yeah, you're, you're exactly, 30, minutes into, exactly. 30 minutes into a raid and you see a helicopter go overhead and you're like on the street, right? In the middle of the road and yeah. Lighthouse and all of a sudden you see the helicopter land like two big houses up the hill yeah. in the backyard and you're like, oh, fuck. Like, let's go over there. Yeah. You know, and that's how 100%. your PMC interactions are, are going to be that kind of experience yeah. rather than spawn bullshit. For sure. A hundred percent. So, but then, and then they can use predictability as many other games. Because once again, they're not like, a, they're not, they're not reinventing. They're not like inventing any new systems. What, what I like about the con concept of Gray Zone is that they're using many existing game design ideas and putting them together in a ingredient list that hasn't been done before. Nothing, yep. no thing is like, hasn't been done before. Similar to Tarkov, right? Like Tarkov isn't the first game with guns. It's not the first game where you like extract from a mission. It's not the first game that when you die, you lose stuff, but they assembled these ingredients in a way and put emphasis on these ingredients over those ingredients. And that created this experience that basically created a new genre, right? So gray zone isn't inherently doing that, but, I'll be interesting to see how then they can then use the map to use predictability. Like maybe towards the center, there are villages that always have higher tier loot. That's a great catalyst for PVP. Just like in Daisy, the Northwest airfield was like the map was huge and you could go days without seeing anybody, but you knew if you went to gray zone or sorry, you knew if you went to the Northwest airfield, you'd probably find somebody because there was that predictability of like, okay, I'm choosing that risk. I know that there's high tier loot there. So instead of the predictability being, I know where these people spawn. Everybody's spawning with me. It's more of a like, ooh, where on the map? Like, this is a more dangerous part of the map. Maybe I'm going to run into something there. So they can then use like more actual design and map design to fill that hole. Because I know a lot of people are worried you'll never really run into PvP. And maybe you won't. Like, maybe 48 players on a map that big is too small. We won't know until we get in there. But I'll be interested to see how they use like common mission locations or maybe high tier loot locations to kind of be those catalysts. Like if you are a PVP -er and you want to go fight someone, then you're out there. Um, and then and then I I hadn't considered that until just now. I almost wish I put that in my script. But the the flipping of like right now, if you're in if you're playing with three other people, if you're a four man squad and three of you die. The three of you are waiting on that guy. That guy's kind of like, I need to get out of this raid as soon as possible. How cool is it to maybe flip that? To be like, well, now the three people are like, let's fucking get back there. Yeah, or or the one might say, I need to back up and reposition. Meet me over here. Don't meet me at your dead bodies. Meet me over here. We'll try and flank these guys. Yeah. Momentum of your play session. You died, but it's not over yet. You know what I mean? Like, but you can decide There's it's over. You can be like, I don't want to go back there. You can, but but you got to decide that. You know what I mean? Like momentum. That's super exciting to me. Um, and you never, you never have. See, the, here's the thing. Tarkov always had like the illusion of what I'm about to explain, which is you had, let's say you were in a four man, right? And your three homies die, and you know that there's like a three man there. Yeah. You could try and kill them, yeah. or you could like sit and hold their bodies and wait for them to like loot and then hope you can like yeah kill them while they're looting or whatever um <laughs> but you were like never motivated if you got too far away then they would just be able to like loot and, and like get out with the shit but like the idea of like i'm gonna reposition try to get like a tactical position and i'm gonna wait for reinforcements yeah is like a thing now that it's like okay 
you have a chance at getting your shit back. You have a chance at avenging. Yeah. Um, and getting everything right. It's not just because before it was I'll kill them so that I can throw your shit on the ground. Yeah. As opposed to so that I can we we can get our stuff. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like. And yeah. And it's not so quick that like I know it was you know somebody said it as a joke the never ending battle. It's not like you can respawn on your buddies, right? Like that yeah, would no. uh, that would obviously be a bad thing because then a fight would never end and like that loot would just kind of keep piling up. Infinite. Yeah, yeah. Like in Gray Zone, similar to what you just saw, if you watch the IGN footage, like you'll spawn at your base, then you have to gear up, then you have to call in a helicopter, then you have to fly that helicopter to the closest landing zone to where you are, not just where you are. Then you have to land and then you have to hike it on foot. So like if a team wipes your team, they definitively have enough time to loot you and go away. It's not like you're going to keep showing up and annoying them. Like, they have enough time to go away. But if they wanted to wait and see if you'd come back to kill you again, they could. You know what I mean? Or if you wanted to go back and see if there were any scraps left behind, you could. Maybe they go depot all of the stuff they can carry, then they're coming back to get the rest of it when you guys arrive, like... So it's not so quick. Or, or you were a one man that wiped the four man and you want to be able to do trips. laps. Yeah, 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 yeah. So it's not like it's going to be so fast that it gets annoying. Um, but 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 just the, the fact that it's even and here's and here's where I think you and I would and I would agree. We don't want that to happen with every fight where like every fight I get back and I can get back in the fight and I can avenge the guy. I just want that to be a possibility because then yeah. when those things happen, however rare they are, that's like a sick experience. I don't want to be able to do that every fight. It's I, I think a, a lot of the time you're going to be like, I died. I had some mid tier shit. No, not even worth. Not going. Even if worth. I see the guy, I see the guy, whatever. But, yeah. you know, it's not worth. But with your when you're with a team, it's worth it to get back there. It's a it's a benefit. If you happen to have like, I don't know how quest items are going to work, but if you happen to have gotten a quest item or you happen to have had that one gun that you wanted for a yeah. while, like it gives you the benefit of having a chance at getting the thing that you yeah. really wanted. Whereas Tarkov is like one and done. Think about, I didn't even thought about this. We're all talking about this through the realm of PVP. Think about how many times you lost your kit in Tarkov to some bullcrap scav that was facing the other direction in, in, in a bush that couldn't even see you. He flipped his gun over his shoulder and one tapped you. And you're like, no! Like, you know what I mean? Like, imagine being on a mission and the AI kill you and you can go back out there and, like, try to retrieve some of the stuff. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know. I'm excited. And then I think what's funny when we talk about stuff like this is the, like, the concept of, like, hype is so fascinating to me now because what I have... I think I'm at the point where I've heard that gray zone is overhyped more than I've heard I'm excited for gray zone. Like, what does that mean? It feels like three people get excited about something and a hundred people are like, everyone's so hyped about this. That's dumb. Like, I, I, my, I feel like my hot take is that like hype is singular. Like you're hyped for this game or you're not. Like, you know what I mean? If if you see a bunch of people on the internet saying, like, this this game will be the second coming of Christ, it will cure me of my cancer, you could be like, I don't think so. And then you're not hyped for the game. And if you're not hyped yeah. for the game and the game doesn't isn't good, then you're you didn't you weren't let down. Like if I'm hyped for the game, you don't have to worry about that. If I'm hyped for the game and it's not good, that didn't affect you. I think I don't I get think, it. <laughs> so I guess the question is, is this is it fundamentally different than if someone came in and was like, bro, I'm so hyped for the yeah. next patch in Tarkov. And. Like my response is like, would be like, I'm happy for you. Yeah. Like what like okay but but yeah. at the same time thinking like it's going to be another flop which is like what people are thinking they're just assuming yeah. because every game that that comes out that everybody's hyped for it's almost like the more hype the more shitty it is yeah um 
and the things that people are excited for. Honestly, the things that have been the most exciting yeah. and been the best uh, uh, additions to like gaming recently are things that no one knew anything about or were yeah, not they just about. popped up. Pal like, world, uh, hell world, hell divers, hell divers, um, uh, <laughs> Baldur's Gate. Like a lot of people were excited about Baldur's Gate, but like only the people yeah. that were super into not to the level. And whatever. You're right. You're right. You're right. <laughs> so, so like these were all pleasant surprises, and everything we've been excited about has turned out to be dog shit. Yeah. So I think at this point people are so fucking jaded that yeah. they're just like, it's good. It's another you know whatever. Um, For sure, but like the. Not saying they're right. No, no, no. I'm just I, saying, I, like, I, and I, once again, I actually think the the people that are anti hype, at the core of it, I understand where they're coming from, and I agree with it. I think the way they express it is is weird because it crosses a line. Because like someone in chat said, it means there have been so many disappointments with past titles never delivering promises. What if I told you I completely agree with you, and I'm excited for this game, like. My hype has adjusted as a result of what's happened recently. Like the day before is a great example. It was it was great marketing. It looked cool and it, it never did. And there's been a hundred of those games. And I can I can hold both of those things. Like I can say I'm really excited for what Gray Zone's trying to do. I really hope it's good. I hope it's not like these games. Like I, I just don't understand to what end. It it seems like I am very excited about what Gray Zone's trying to do because on paper it is the literal exact game I have wanted for like 2 years now. Everything. That doesn't mean I am wholly convinced it will be a smashing success and it will have no issues. It means I actually very cautiously I'm like dude I really hope they nail this and I really hope they do deliver because if they don't like this is like you know something I've I've been excited for uh, or something that I've wanted and I hope it's not like those other games. It feels like the anti-hype people are like, you actually have to actively hate it until it arrives. And then if it's good, you're fine. You know what I mean? I was like, I just don't know. I don't know to what end because I have personally, you know, I, I'll tell you what the end is. internalized that I have personally said, okay, this is what they say. This game is going to be about. That sounds really cool to me. I'm excited. I'm excited to see the gameplay. I'm just, I'm just going to wait and see. But when people ask me, I'm going to say I'm excited. So to what end are you like, ah, it's overhyped though under people. The people are boringly predictable, okay? And you have these people on one end that when someone says, I'm hyped, what they hear is a naive person who has no idea about what's yeah, happened yeah. in gaming. And so they are they have been duped by the marketing. Dude. So that's why the people are like, you're just fucking, you've fallen for whatever. And they're just cynically, they that think is that they what it have feels like. like no, that that's what it is. It feels like like they they think I don't know about the day before, <laughs> like that's a exactly. And it, it's the it, I mean I hate to bring this into it, but it's the same thing with like the flat earthers, where you're like, of course the Earth isn't flat. And people are like, yeah, but have you thought about how the the uh, boats don't go over the cur as if I haven't heard about it? They just yeah. assume that everybody yeah. is as fucking base basic yeah. as they are. So that's why you can't. You have to change your language. Yeah, you can't. You can't speak with the words that you mean or that anyone means anymore with anything. You have to say the words that that are immune to the bullshit. So you have to say, "I'm looking forward to seeing what they do." I'm cautiously optimistic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll yeah. See. Otherwise, you're going to get called out by. That's what it is, dude. Dude, a hundred percent. People are are mega predictable, and the most predictable people they see a pattern. And and they are self fulfillingly yeah. going. Oh, these people are predictable, and I know the pattern, so I'm going to call them out on it. When they yeah. can't, they can't distinguish between when something is a blatant cash grab. Yeah, that that some people were like hyped for when they were a million red flags versus something that yeah is too early to tell. Versus it's yeah. And and to be clear, like Berserk is in chat. I've read a few of his messages. I'm not talking about you. You haven't been an asshole in this conversation. I'm saying that like a lot of the things you were saying were things other people that were douchebags because I just all day for the past two days, it's been like, what did you think about the footage? I think it looks pretty cool. I'm excited for it. Oh my God, dude, the hype. It's just like it 
immediately. So you're right. Like I have to say, I have to use the language. I have to be like, it looks pretty cool. I'm excited for what it is conceptually, but we're going to have to wait and see. Like it's, and I think that's exactly it is that the, the I never had it put that way, but it's like those people, the the people that are really angry about it, it, it feels like, yeah, they, they think I, I don't know that games have failed before. And it's like, oh, I'm here to help you. Like there have been so many broken promises. There have been, it's like, I'm very aware games, games. I'm, I have been, I was really, really excited for the day before. Like towards the end, I kind of knew what it was going to be even before it released. But like when the original trailer came out, like I've been burned before, we've all been burned before. I remember, yeah, Anthem. But so yeah, I think somebody, he brought that up earlier. Like I remember this was even before I started streaming the trailers for Anthem came out and I was like, this is going to be sick. That game was a steaming pile of trash. It's like, is there a game out there? Like to those people, I'd be like, yeah, but is there a game out there that if it was like literally somebody snuck into your brain and wrote down all the things you love about games and made that into a game, is it crazy to be excited for that? Like, I just don't think it is. My excitement, my hype is colored by the previous broken promises, what's happened in the industry. Like it's, it's, it's something, what you're trying to do to me is something I've already done. I've seen these things. I've adjusted my expectations of early access titles. And this is one I'm excited for and hope does well. But like, I'm not, sometimes it feels like people think, yeah, like I'm investing in crypto and they're like, I know I have to tell you about all these scams. Don't do it. And it's like, I'm not, I haven't pre-ordered gray zone. I haven't put any money up. I'm not investing my kid's college fund. It's just, it's really as simple as like, hey, Jesse, what do you think about the gameplay? I thought it looked cool. I'm excited for the game. And and I'm not even saying you're, you're not allowed to say you're not excited for the game. What I'm saying is when we cross the line of saying, I shouldn't be excited about the game. That's when I'm like, shut up. You know what I mean? If you're like, if somebody, which is kind of like what Berserk did, but if you're just coming in, you're like, yeah, I don't know. Like, it looks kind of cool, but... You know, we've been burned before. We'll wait and see. I'll be like, yeah, no, you're right. You know what I mean? For sure. So I don't know. It's fascinating. That's my little rant on it. I just have been asked about it so many times these past two days and had to defend an ounce of excitement for a video game that's coming out so many times that I just needed that little soapbox rant of like, I'm allowed. I'm aware of what's happened in the industry. You don't have to educate me. Yeah, I don't know. <clears throat> But yeah, mm -hmm. so that once again, and and what what I'll say is that like if Gray Zone fails, I hope somebody comes along and does it right, um, because I really think that once again, the core the core conceit of it, which is that like the main character of the game is the map, and your persistence on it, like as someone who is currently pretty frustrated with like a lot of the things ba 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 in Tarkov, I'm like. This has to be a game, whether it's a mod and armor reforger, whether it's gray zone or whether it's a new game coming like this has to be a game. We need a good shot at this because this is it's what you, everything you and I have been talking about for years now. I remember like I don't remember what episode, but it was it was like two years ago, though. We did like a episode on like what would Tarkov look like open world. And, yep. and we were like, these problems would have to be solved, and here's how we'd do it. And that's pretty much Gray Zone. That doesn't mean they will nail it. Mad Finger Games will nail it. But yep. what we talked about is, like, what this game is. And so for two years, we've been like, God, wouldn't it be cool? Wouldn't it be cool? So that's what they say they're doing. I'm freaking stoked to give it a try. You know what I mean? Yeah, and next week I'll be able to talk a little bit more about a little bit more. Uh, for now, what I can say is that the things I like that Twitch I... Rhyme. Yeah. <laughs> it's rhyme. <laughs> um, now, now, what I can say is that my... I, I've communicated a, a decent little chunk with the folks over there, um, including, you know, like, the equivalent of Nikita. Yeah. Um, and... All indications have been, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Encouraging. Um, in many ways. So, yeah. Hell yeah. Hell to, uh, yes. Um, <clears throat> yeah. So, 
that is uh that's the gray zone news um yeah i don't know we don't we don't have a date they had originally said q1 but q1 is over in like two weeks and they said it wasn't coming out this month so i don't think we have like a uh um I don't think we have like an updated release schedule or anything, which is fine because we were, I think we were talking about this the other day off stream a little bit. I firmly believe that like everybody has enough room in their daily life for like a incomplete game, but not multiple. It's like you have people yeah. that play Star Citizen all the time and all those people know that game is not a game and they're, they probably don't have any room for like a new early access space game. It's like they need a finished game. Right, like we play Tarkov, I play a, a very incomplete game every day. I don't have the capacity to play a lot of Star Citizen, to play another incomplete game. Even though I love that game so much, I just play an incomplete game all day long. I don't want another one. So my big thing with Gray Zone is delay it till next year if you have to, because if you drop it and it's got the bones for it, Half but it's eggs. not, it's not ready, I do think it'll die. Because most people by now already have that hole filled. They have a yep. game they play that's incomplete that they hate. <laughs> you know what I mean? We all have one. So, <laughs> so like vertical slice. That's what Tarkov never had. I want like a, even if you give me a quarter of the map, I just want vertical slice. I want something to work in gray zone. That's what I hope we get. You know what I mean? Um I, I almost think, like, based on what you're saying and like what we've, what I, what I was saying earlier, I almost feel like devs these days should almost like entirely forego early access and f and not even market beforehand. Like, there's yeah. there's there's something to because what what we had for so long was like the typical sort of like Hollywood kind of thing where it's like everything's 90 percent done then yeah. they start the marketing yeah and then they come yeah. up with a release date and then and then it's done for like two months before yeah. like the, like the movie is <laughs> is on the fucking reel and it's just like we're waiting until september 17th yeah. before the release date right so then they finally um <laughs> and then like games went the opposite way which is like we want to get the hype train rolling early yeah and then but so we're going to do that, but then people get bored because they're just seeing trailers. They yeah. want to play it. So then it's yeah. like, then they responded with early access. And then now we've just been dealing with yeah seven years early access, but you pay three times the price of full price and sure. it's dog shit until release. hundred um, percent. I think, I think, and, and then, and, and now the going the other way around, it's like the response is flip it back to, we're not going to fucking market. We're just going to release and it's going to, and all of a sudden, Day one is yeah. Asmongold being like, oh, I'm playing this new game, and it blows up the next day. Because the games, all those ones you mentioned, Power World, Helldivers, um, Baldur's Gate, Valheim, like, Power World was an early access game, but it was like, it just released, and there was a game. There was a whole game there. There was, like, stuff to do. And the the feedback, like, the Asmongolds, all the React, the Penguin Xenos, all the React Andes, the feedback from all of the famous people were like, it's a it's a complete game. And it's so refreshing to see. You know what I mean? That was like, oh my God, it's a complete game. So I agree. I think early access, I think the industry, I think game devs should swing that back a little bit. I think early access really like you really need a vertical slice. You need a whole thing. And, and not just like this, like, yeah, well, this, that, like huge bugs, game breaking stuff. It, we'll we'll, add, we'll add that later. I know that's hard to do, but like for indie devs, because for sure. these, these big companies, it was like this when I was in the software industry. OK, we would have this product and it would be like a shipping product that we would ship. And it was like we but we have these future things that we need to do. Yeah. Every six months, our CEO would have a meeting with a bunch of millionaires to get another six months worth of runway. Yeah. And these indie devs don't have some ex Senator businessman CEO to go do that bullshit. They don't have the interest or the skills or the connections. Yeah. So that's why they need to either do a Kickstarter or they need to do early access because how long do you want to be employing a bunch of engineers? For sure. Worrying about if they're going to have a job 
six months from now when it's going to take three or four years you know to develop so yeah. it's it's a it's a it's a complicated thing it like, is it's hard sure. yeah i don't know i don't know i uh yeah i wonder how madfinger or gray zone is funded because they haven't launched like a kickstarter Are we it's early access i don't think we have a price yet there's no pre-orders so it's not like like I think that was a big thing. Correct me if I'm wrong with the day before though, is that like you could pre order it and that they just be obviously you can make so much money off that and then even if the game is garbage, you've still banked a lot of that money. I don't know. Yeah. So so we'll see. Uh could be a terrible game. I don't know. I haven't played it, but what I'm hoping is that they delay it. Like as much as I wanna play it and as much as I can gawk over this concept, I think people have they don't have the space for more than one incomplete game in their life, and we all already have one. So I hope that it nails it. Um, Related to this, did you see the thing that happened with Big Fry? Oh like a week yeah, ago? Mm -hmm. yeah. That that looked like another day before kind of thing where he. I, I only watched his like twelve minute yeah. video that was attached to his tweet, where basically like it looks like. It looks like a bunch of dudes who just yeah. keep going from project to project to project, making the same cookie cutter bullshit that they never ship. Yeah. Charging. And then now this one, it looks exactly like standard EOD left behind, yeah, like yeah, yeah. kind of thing, except they have a history of like ev all their developers have a history of just never finishing yeah, games or, on or the ones they do games. finish or dog shit. Yeah. Um, so, <laughs> so, and he's been dealing with like threats of lawsuits and DMCA strikes on all of his videos and whatever. And I hope, I hope he gets that sorted. Yep. Yeah. Project lead. Yeah. Yeah. It's funny. Cause like, I don't want to sound like, I don't know. I watched somebody was like, dude, the trailer for project lead looks sick. And I watched it and I was like, I just, I don't know. I, I don't know. I don't know if you've watched it, but I was like. It kept to me. It kept vacillating between like it was like Daisy Dead Island. Well, it looked like every other like scene was like, oh my god, this looks beautiful. Like this looks sick. And then it was like, is this Raid Shadow Legends reskinned with guns? Like it was just like the like UI and the menu felt like super like you know cash grabby like spend all your money mobile game but then some of the like the aesthetics and the vibe looked like super triple a and i was just like really thrown off by the trailer and i didn't know what to think and then like two days later i saw the big fry thing and i was like okay here's the deal at this point at this point it's just like trivial to have a first person shooter game that has beautiful fucking lighting yeah and cool animations and it's every every game every fucking there's been 7 billion games in the last five years that have had trailers where they, it looks incredible with guns and cool animations and textures and, and lighting through the trees and god rays and all this stuff. And like none of that is ever actually relevant to whether the game is good to Dude, play or not. That's why that's that that was why I was getting frustrated over some of the criticism of the gray zone. Because everyone's like, the guns sound the same. Everyone's using an M4. The the animation looks weird. His wrist looks like it's broken. I was like, uh, who cares? Like, every everybody has cool animations now. And then they make games nobody wants to play. I was like, I, I get that. I'm, I, of course, love cool animations. I want the guns to sound cool. I want there to be 763,000 guns from, you know, the Stone Ages all the way up to here. I want everything, every customized. But, like, at the beginning, let's, like, it's just, let's get a game. Let's get a game first. And then we can make sure, like, you know what I mean? So, it's like, that's, it's just so, that's so much more important to me, having played Tarkov, you know what I mean, for so long is, there's all sorts of like amazing cool stuff in Tarkov. It's great that we have 77 Glock slides in Tarkov, but like the net code sucks, you know? So I don't know. This, this is a hot take, but uh, I feel like we peaked with the, the most, maybe not the most recent, but whatever Call of Duty we played. Yeah. Were that were like around the time where I was going to do like a recoil comparison yes. video. Honestly, that just has, in my opinion, the best animations. I think that was the Modern Warfare 2 remake. And then the Modern Warfare 3 one came out. But we played a lot of that 
uh, when it first came out, the Modern Warfare 2 freeway, about, about a year ago. Yeah, it was great. I, it, it, they had great animations, yeah. You know, no, no, there's no game that's done it better with, <laughs> you know, shooting, 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 fucking dropping the gun, pulling out your pistol, oh, you know, like, like all of that shit. The mantling no on better. corners and stuff like that. You're right. No one's done No one has done that better. And, and I don't see it getting better because it just looks badass and realistic and it's functional. Yeah. So like, and I don't know why more games haven't done that. I haven't seen, and I don't play a lot of games, so correct me if I'm wrong, Chad, but I haven't seen any other game do the, uh, I still have my gun up, but I've got my Glock out or whatever, quick swap, or the even just walking up to a corner and being able to put my hand and kind of mantle the gun on the corner or on something in front of me. That literally might, some of the best player controller stuff. You know what I mean? The I, most fluid. Oh. I might be like, this is partially dating myself, but at the same time, all of you um, millennials will understand. Gen Zers won't get it. Uh, but because <laughs> I'm too much of a boomer. But um, it was it was like there was always a kid in like high school that always had the latest and greatest like Abercrombie most expensive Abercrombie and Fitch stuff and and he just all of the accessories yep. and whatever and he was not cool okay <laughs> and then because it's just easy to go oh all of those clothes make me cool buy the things put them all I'm cool that's what every fucking first person shooter has yeah and then there's one kid that can just wear the white t-shirt and the jeans that you're like fuck why is that guy so goddamn Dude. cool <laughs> and it's so I hate to say true. It, but, that, but that Call of Duty, it was cool, but because it was cool, not because it was trying yeah. super fucking hard. Yeah, it, it knows how to be cool because it was intrinsically cool. Every other game is fucking Abercrombie wearing very sexy cologne. You know, trying like trying to be cool. Yeah, that's such a good analogy too because we all have that friend. That it's like, that doesn't even match, and you look cooler than me. How is that possible? It's just because they are cool. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. So, we'll see. Uh, we'll see what happens. But uh, that's it. That's the stuff. That's the Tarkov Arena News, Gray Zone News. Next week, maybe we'll have some cool Gray Zone conversations based on Veritas's... So, I don't know. We'll see. Um... But yeah, you guys are the best. Thank you for hanging. If you want more conversations like this one, you should head to patreon.com slash the podcast pod. We have a Patreon. We do extra episodes over there. You can get early access to these episodes. Our most extra spicy. Our most recent episode was like a continuation of the previous awesome episode. They've been, dude, let me tell you, the ones over there have been like deep lore rich jesse gazam lore rich bangers so uh, I've, been, I've been like giving people like a very quick little teaser summary of the whole thing and i got i haven't checked yet but i'm pretty sure i've gotten like three people a, a day yeah, to like, to like I, got, okay, I gotta check it out i gotta check it out uh yeah. and so far no one's no one's regretted it so so uh if you want more cool conversations we do that patreon.com slash the podcast pod Thank you again to Mando and BetterHelp for sponsoring this episode. And thank you guys for listening and uh, hanging with us. We enjoy it. So uh, you guys are the best. And we will definitely see y'all on the next one. Peace.